Standard Poor's Rating Services has just published a new report looking at the looming gap in infrastructure funding, funding of infrastructure projects around the world. And I'm very pleased to be joined by Mike Wilkins, uh, infrastructure ratings analyst and co-author of the report um, today to discuss it. Um, Mike, how big is this projected shortfall in, uh, in infrastructure funding and kind of what is driving it? Right, Martin, we've estimated that the gap could be as much as $500 billion per annum from now until 2030. Uh, that's under our base case assumptions that governments continue to spend around 3% of GDP from now until 2030. Um, and, you know, that could obviously alter depending on different rates. So if, if governments, for example, were to spend only 2% of GDP, which has been the case in the US last year, then that funding gap could increase to $1.5 trillion per annum until 2030. Conversely, if governments were to increase their spending up to 3% of GDP, then that gap actually will, will go down to zero, and that gap will be totally plugged by government spending. But we think that's pretty unrealistic uh, due to the pressures that we see on government spending, increasing deficits and uh, uh, and debt burdens which uh, um, governments have been saddled with which can't allow that level of infrastructure spending to continue. So, I mean, given that gap, that mm. persistent gap uh, yeah. in funding, um, are institutional investors and capital markets players getting more actively involved in the infrastructure space? Absolutely. This is a trend that started last year. Institutional investors are far more interested in infrastructure as an asset class. Uh, as you will see from the chart here, um, if you look at the current allocation by institutions uh, defined as assets under management to infrastructure, that's been around 2% or so. Um, and that's due to increase uh, based on their target allocation to around a weighted average of 4%, with some funds uh, going up to 8% target allocation of their assets under management. Now, we believe that based on $80 trillion of fixed income assets under management currently, but if you saw that kind of increase from the institutions, somewhere in the region of $3.2 trillion uh, or somewhere around $200 billion per annum could actually be allocated to infrastructure. Now, that won't plug the gap totally because we know it's $500 billion per annum, but it will go a long way to actually making sure that that deficit is shortened. Is that going to happen or are there some conditions that need to be in place you know, to entice institutional investors into, into this uh, sector? Well, institutions are very attracted to infrastructure as, as an asset class, especially the debt associated with infrastructure because it's long dated, it provides an attractive yield relative to corporate or sovereign debt, and also they want to match their liabilities and pick up some in inflation uh, indexing as well. So there are a lot of attractions uh, to infrastructure debt, but there's also uh, other areas which are not so attractive. Uh, firstly, there's a lack of information on the performance of infrastructure assets. Uh, there's also concerns about some of the risks of infrastructure, such as construction risk. Uh, and finally, um, the regulators, especially the insurance regulators under Solvency II, are not exactly making infrastructure the most attractive asset class for insurers to provide their allocations to. Uh, based on the um, proposed capital allocation. So we believe more incentives are required before we're going to see that level of institutional investment actually plug the gap totally. Mike, thank you very much. Thank you. And you can view our reports on the infrastructure funding gap and prospects for um, plugging it uh, on our public website, um, spratings.com. Thank you. Mm -hmm.